welcome to LVS Perspectives. I think this is probably about number 71. <laughs> Can't believe that, can you? And um, today we're going to be talking about Accelerator Reader and uh, Round Square as well, giving you an update. Um, so we're here to answer any questions, and it can be general school questions as you want, because I do have Mrs. Isold here, as you can see, and Mrs. McCrow will be online as well, and will, so will Mrs. Wall. So any questions you've got about school in general, this is a really good opportunity to, to send us questions as well. So, Mrs. Isold, you're going to take us through accelerated reading, and this affects both the infant and junior school and the senior school up until year nine. It does. And I'm going to leave you to present to us on what's going to happen after half term. Right. Bear with, because we've just switched the slides around. There we go. So if you were part of the school pre-COVID, um, maybe the senior end of the school, you might remember Accelerated Reader. We're bringing this back, but it has changed beyond what you remember from beforehand. So Accelerated Reader, it is a computer-based program that can monitor reading practice and progress. So the teachers will have a really good handle on what your child is reading and the progress that they are making. It will help the teachers to guide the children to books at their individual reading level, really focusing on those comprehension skills. And following each book, the children will take a quiz to check their comprehension and we can monitor the results that the children get. So how it works. As Mrs. Kenneth just said, we're rolling this out to Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3, so from years 3 to 9. They start off by taking a STAR assessment at set times throughout the academic year. The assessment is adaptive. It will adjust the vocabulary questions, the comprehension questions, to the level of the individual pupil as they make progress through the assessment. Once it's complete, they'll be given what they call a ZPD. The ZPD is a zone of proximal proximal development and it's really looking at the place where they can get the optimal challenge but without frustration. We don't want children being put off reading but we need to encourage reading at the right level. And this said PD will be on the edge of every book, most books in the LRC in the Junior School Library as you can see there with in decimals the 3.9, 5.5, 5.7 and the children can choose within their range. So an example of that is this one here. So this pupil has got a ZPD of 3.2 to 5.4 and the age range is between 9 and 13 in the middle years. Books at the lower end of that range, that 3.2, will provide them with a little bit of challenge at the beginning and as they move through that term or between the two points of assessment they should be moving up towards the top end of their range. That will give them the optimal level of challenge in the comprehension and the vocabulary, but without providing too much frustration. So hopefully see some really good progress. Obviously they can read whatever they want and we don't want to stop them reading books that they're interested in, for example, the history of Manchester United, but it will provide more challenge. There'll be lots of vocabulary there they're unfamiliar with or not been introduced to, and the level of fluency and potentially self-confidence could drop. Equally down the other end of their, the range, the comfort zone they call it, is not going to provide a challenge for progress, but it will give children fluency and it will give them comfort and they will enjoy reading what they're reading. But we're aiming for books within their zone. And a lovely lady in the LRC can also help children select the right book for them. This is brand new. This is called Myon, and this is a brand new addition to the Accelerated Reader programme. So we've also bought this additional package with for our children. The exciting part about this is a digital library and once they've taken their star assessment you can see at the top there it just pulls through into Myon so they'll be recommended books in their range again they can read low and they can read higher but it's looking for that optimal challenge level the content will be suggested to them but there is a little big search function as well they can find children can choose from over 8,000 titles in the library majority of these are non-fiction, they're shorter, lots more facts in them because they're online books and so you won't find necessarily um, chapter books apart from in the classic sections. For example, our Year 6 Children's Red Holes, that is not on the digital package as it's such a large book, but some of the classic texts, Oliver Twist, Jane Eyre, we will find those. 
and children can set their preferences. You see the image there, so they can move the circles up and down the smiley faces to set their preferences for different topics. So again, when they're recommended these books, be recommended from their preferences, which can be changed at any time. So this is what a book inside my arm would look like when you open up the pages and you've got the toolbar down the right hand side. They have lots of options to personalise the reading, the reading experience for the child. It's really helping those children maybe where English is not their first language or children that maybe find reading that a little bit harder than others. The text can be read to the pupil. Words or sentences can be highlighted so you can follow along or read along with it. It can have, it's got a record function so a child can record themselves reading the text, maybe listen to it first then read it back and then the teacher can see if their reading is improving. Again, really suitable for children where English is not their first language. There's a dictionary function. Simply double clicking on a word will open the dictionary and give you a definition, but also you can just use it for any other word. It doesn't have to be just inside that book. Most interestingly for teachers, it gives the teacher a summary of how long that child spent reading that book and if they read all the pages. So this example here clearly read 14 of the 14 pages, but only in four minutes and nine seconds. So probably not read it properly. They've also got the option there to quiz at the end in the same way as you would do after reading a traditional text. And another really good part of this is they're also available in Spanish. So I know Mrs. Mackey in the Infinite Junior School is very keen to share some books with the children, particularly those children where they're native speakers but not necessarily native readers. The other element we've brought into is the My On News. It's a little bit like um, News Round on steroids. So Monday to Friday, there's five new topical news stories which are published on My On. This was taken from a week or so ago and the children just click on the news story they want to read. It is based in the US, the news comes from it, but it is worldwide news. And each of those stories are checked and assessed by child psychologists. So there's hopefully should be no trigger triggers in there and nothing to scare some children away. When they open up a news article, first of all, they will get hold of the main story. It will start with a lovely picture at the top and the text underneath. Just like in the Mayon text, they can choose how it read to them or it can be, you can read it yourself. Most of these texts are, these articles are translated into English, into Spanish, sorry, French, Arabic and Mandarin. The older ones may only be in Spanish and French, but all the recent ones are in Arabic and Mandarin as well. There are links to other books that might be of interest to them. There's this story on Groundhog Day, there's books on groundhogs. It will link to other stories they have that are in my on for the children to read. Like in any news article, oh sorry, the questions come first. There's also at the bottom of each article, there are three questions, again, linked to the text, just to check that comprehension. Teachers might use this in the classroom as a daily news, or they might use set it for prep at home as for homework. There's more images you can find and any videos that might be appropriate linking to the real news in the world out there. There's often a fact box and an act or an activity the child can do to follow up. It might be a thought, have a think about how you could do X, Y, Z, or it might be create a poster to bring awareness to something. And finally, they've got a map. It shows where in the world that article is from. At the bottom there, there's at signposts will say how far it is from the UK, how long it would take to fly there. And at the top corner, there's a little green um, icon. If you click on that, it will say hello in the native language of that country, and you could hear how it is spoken in that country. So, he's just one of my favourite quotes, and all that knows me love, knows I love Dr. Zeus. So the next steps, our lovely ladies up in the LRC are currently busy cataloguing and labelling all the books. That will continue into the first few weeks after half term as well, but most books that we had previously are already in that are ready for the system change. Children in Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3 will take their STAR assessment in that first week in their English lessons and they'll all have their login details. Children in Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 4 and 5 will get a login, but they'll have access to just the Myon side of things. Um, and they'll the Myon information, whereas they haven't got a ZPD, it will pull from their year group as a recommended reading, but again, they can choose anything at all. We've also, it's not been added just yet, got something called STAR Early Literacy, which we've used for the children EYFS and Key Stage 1. More information to follow on that one once I've done the training and how we talked about how we can embed it with our very successful phonics programme. 
It's very, very exciting. <laughs> I've, and I've got an apology to make to you, because despite us saying that round square was going to go first, within the 30 <laughs> seconds that the intro music was on, I completely forgot that. So I am so sorry. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to the discussion on reading and we're going to go over to the round square. Mrs. Wall and Mrs. McCrell. So apologies, Mrs. Isaac. We'll come back and have a discussion Bye. in a minute. We'll go back. So over <laughs> to round square. Well done. I'm really glad you're, you're really good with that. So well done. There okay. we go. Over to Mrs. Wall and Mrs. McCrell. Whoever's going to start first. Thank you, Mrs. Cameron. Uh, we've got some quite exciting news now in terms of um, working with this, this Round Square community across the school. So to explain what Round Square is, if you haven't heard of it before, it's um, an international network of over 250 schools now with that like-minded community. And it runs across 50 countries and all those schools and connect and collaborate to just offer world-class programs and amazing experiences that develop global competence, something which we're really striving for at LVS Ascot, as well as developing character and confidence in our pupils here. Um, as a Round Square School, so we can create and, and access fantastic practical opportunities and also approaches to teaching and learning that um, internationalise our curriculum, that take students beyond the classroom and just really realise their potential. So teachers can um, develop their professional skills and collaborate with different opportunities from schools across the world. You can see here on the map we've got um, all the different schools that are pinpointing there. And this Round Square community, like LVS School, cares passionately about what happens to the world in the future and to the fascinating variety of, of cultures and communities it really supports. We want our community to thrive and to prosper and care about each other um, in, in mutual cooperation. So to achieve this, we really encourage our people to be courageous and compassionate so they can go out into the world as individuals who are prepared to discover and embrace different cultures and nationalities in the way that promotes those meaningful relationships that we are really looking for. So our pupils, they are the next generation of business leaders, political leaders, community leaders, and at LVS Ascot, we, we want to shape the way that they are understanding and preparing for and essentially responding to the challenges that the world are facing today. Underpinning this, we have something called the Round Square Ideals. And you can see here what each of them stands for. And if you're already a member of our community, you'll know that, that we demonstrate lots of these already. And uh, some of these are integrated into the many different opportunities and activities that go on at LVS Ascot. So we have internationalism. I think we really do embrace this. But being a part of the Round Square community opens up more opportunities for our students, as I said, to learn about different cultures in different countries. Democracy underpins that part of being a round square school. We have had a lot of democratic voting in the past. One of the examples of this is how we elect our, our heads of school. And we're going to be looking at how to offer our pupils more opportunities to take part in democratic processes within our school. Environmentalism, something which is very, very close to our heart at LVS Ascot. We are always looking for different ways to be more sustainable and consider the impact that we are having on the world around us. And an exciting opportunity coming up will be during Sustainability Week, which is taking place in March this year. Adventure, something I'm particularly fond of and love that this is part of the Round Square Ideals. So encouraging character development and confidence and really showing our students what they can achieve that they might not have realised that they were capable of. Leadership. We are lucky here to have very strong student leaders and um, we have members of our six formers who support and develop our community as a whole and being part of the Round Square will allow them to do that on, on a broader scale. And finally, service. Our students do go out into our local community as volunteers to support initiatives that are going on. But Round Square allows them to broaden their reach and take part in projects which are across the world, across different countries, all over the world, which is really a fantastic opportunity for our pupils and our staff. So underpinning the ideals, the IJS as a starting point, are going to be focusing on something called the discoveries. And Mrs. McCrell is going to be taking you through those. Thank you. So yeah, slightly different in the down in the IJS. Obviously, we we already have our learning values and skills, and these actually, very luckily, 
tie in beautifully with the 12 discoveries. So the discoveries are attitudes, attributes, skills and values which underpin all of those ideals that Mrs. Wall was just talking about. So those 12 discoveries are going to be integrated into lesson, pl lesson planning. We're going to use them to create curricula for extracurricular activities. And they're going to form the structure for a wide variety of reflection and non-formal assessment activities as well. So I'm very excited about these different characters that we have here. The 12 discoveries are communication, inquisitiveness, appreciation of diversity, problem solving, responsibility, commitment to sustainability, tenacity, inventiveness, courage, self-awareness, teamwork and compassion. And you can see on the little slide that I've got there, we've got a very exciting character for each of those different 12 discoveries. So there on the slide, you can see inquisitive Indu, problem solving Papri, up at the top, we've got communication Kara and teamwork Tama. And all these names have been chosen because these characters are from all over the globe, very, very diverse, very inclusive. And hopefully each of these characters has a little story. So we will be able to really fully get the younger children to understand how they can show these attributes and these skills in real life. So we'll be introducing some of those um, very, very soon. In fact, we're hoping to introduce Sustainability Suki for the Sustainability Week that Mrs. Wall was talking about in March. We just need to get permission first. So there are lots and lots of opportunities that we're hoping to get the whole school involved in, right the way down from reception all the way up to year 13, and also for staff as well, which is really exciting. There are lots of things that we can get involved with. So one of them is a Zoom postcard. So up to 500, but normally between 70 and 150 students will log on to Zoom and one of the schools around the world will host a discussion about a certain topic. It could be to do with mental health in schools. It could be something to do with sustainability. It could be something to do with the weather in your country or maybe the school lunches that you have. Hopefully, though, there is a chance for our children to give their opinions and tell them what life is like in England, in Ascot, in Berkshire, and also get a really good understanding of what differences and similarities there might be with their school lunch and a school lunch in Chile or Peru or Mexico, and really get a chance to talk to those people, build those relationships and broaden their understanding of the world. Another one that we can do is some language labs. So again, we can log on to a call, connect with schools across the world, and we can discuss things in another language. So again, Mrs. Mackey has been working very hard. She's very excited about logging into some of the Spanish language labs. And it doesn't matter what the children's ability of language, they will be grouped um, according to that with a group of like-minded children from across the world. They're also doing different subjects for those labs as well. So I know there was a World War II history lab not so long ago. And as I was saying to the children in assembly yesterday, the chance to log on and give our views about what World War II was like in England, you know, our history, but then hear it from a very different point of view from children in Germany or Japan or Italy or Australia and hear how things affected their country and their culture. We're hoping that it will give our students an invaluable experience and a chance to understand a broader um, selection of opinions from around the world. Um, our reception class are currently planning to collaborate with a school in South Africa, I think. And they're going to be sharing the different weather that they can see outside their classroom. So the children in South Africa, still reception age, are going to talk about what sort of weather they have day to day, what it's like in the winter, what it's like in the summer. And our reception children will do the same. Hopefully they'll be able to make some links. They'll be able to see the similarities and differences again. We also have lots and lots of foreign um, uh, experiences that the children can partake in. So there are service projects that the children can do. So a number of delegates will visit somewhere in the world to work on a particular project. 
So there is one coming up very soon, which is building schools in Thailand. Uh, it could be working with elephants in Cambodia. It could be working on a, a planting project somewhere else in the world. There are always these service projects coming up that the children can volunteer for. At least one staff member tends to go with them, but they will go, they will experience the culture and they will do that service project to help the community local to that country. We're also hopefully going to have some exchanges going on. Lots of round square schools um, in, engage in the exchanges and our students can go and live and study in a diff different country, experiencing the culture, the food, the language. And hopefully we will be able to welcome some students from other countries as well so that they can experience the Berkshire life and what it's like to attend LVS Ascot. Most excitingly, and this is the one I'm very excited about this year, we have chance to participate in the International Conference. So in September this year, the International Conference is being held in Colombia, in Bogota. Now, the theme is called Blooming from the Past. And the idea is that we can't move forward without accepting what's gone on in the past understanding what's gone on and why, and being able to change it for the better in the future. So we invite you to grow with us and explore Colombia's breathtaking landscapes, experience its rich culture, and create unforgettable memories. The children will fly into Bogota. They'll stay in a homestay where they stay with a local family in that area, all completely checked and above board, and everything is uh, done to the highest safeguarding uh, standards. And there will be an opening ceremony at one of the five hosting schools in Bogota. Then they will travel. They will spend three days and nights in Boyaca, which is a district about 300 kilometers east of Bogota. They will be partaking in adventure activities. So they'll be pushing themselves. We'll be doing hiking. We'll be doing all sorts of activities. Um, and they will also be doing some service projects as well. Those locations will be hotel stays and then we'll be back to Bogota for the closing ceremony at Colegio Anglo Colombiano and the students will again stay with their homestay family to again say goodbye. They've made lots and lots of friends and they will experience the culture and the food. I think it's an incredible experience. There are lots of these opportunities coming up that I hope our staff and our children are going to get fully immersed in because I think the opportunities that are available to them are going to be absolutely second to none. I wish I'd had this sort of opportunity when I was at school, I have to say. Thank you very much. Mrs. McCrow, aren't you? Because that conference, you're going on that conference in September. I know, I can't wait. And um, you were taking with you um, four current year 11 pupils, isn't it? So four That's students right. that are going to stay on into year 12 next year. And that process will start this term, actually, won't it? To find it out will. who the children will be. And yeah. two weeks ago, the two of you were in Paris. I know. I'm gadding about all over the place at the moment. A little bit of uh, <laughs> feedback on what you two were up to in Paris. It was fantastic. We went as a new round square school and we went to find out basically all the different opportunities that we can get involved with. We met up with all the other reps from the European and the Mediterranean schools. So we've made lots and lots of contacts. Um, we were finding out uh, how we can launch it in our school, how best to get involved in all the different opportunities that there are available and a little bit more behind the values and the skills and the attitudes and really kind of the, the ethos behind Round Square as a whole. Uh, I can honestly say I have never been so excited about a project in a school. Um, and there's, there's so much to get involved in. It's, it's making my head spin. That's great. And I know that over the weekend that you were there, I was getting lots of WhatsApp messages <laughs> from the two of you. So what a great time you had when I was stuck here in Ascot. So I hope you had a great time. Thank and you. it's amazing, isn't it? And also we had an email this week from two teachers who are from Australia and they're going to be in London yes, in yes. April, later in April. And they've asked if they can come and visit us for a couple of days. So that's going to be really good. And in fact, they're primary specialists, aren't they? So they will they be are, spending yeah. a lot of time with you in the, in the junior school as well. So that, that's really yeah. good. So if there's any questions on Round Square, we are really kicking our journey off now. And there's just so much there, isn't there? So much is, that we can do. Very exciting. Very exciting. And what we'll do is we'll start feeding out more and more to parents about what we're doing. But all the, the staff have logins to the Round Square area so they can start, you know, 
uh, engaging with the platform, engaging mm -hmm. with staff from all over the world. And we're going to Oxford in the end of middle of March to find out more about the pilot on those heroes discovery that Mrs. McCrell was talking about. So they've been piloted in schools uh, around the world in the last 12 months, mm -hmm. and we're going back for the launch and to get all the materials, how we can um, use them to promote the um, ideals and the discoveries in our school. And I think the other thing is, is it will have, um, although, because a lot of this we're doing already, as, as you said, and what Mrs. Wall said, we're doing a lot of this already. It's a vehicle to take us forward, but we'll yeah. have a knock on for our learning values and skills. Mrs. McCrae, explain a little bit about that and how that will change as well by next year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the joy of Round Square is that the discoveries are beautifully tied in with our existing learning values and skills. So all it's going to take is a slight tweak of the language. The values are still there. We still believe in developing these skills in young people. But things like the tenacity, I mean, that's just resilience. So it's about teaching the children the equivalent language. We've got um, compassion, all about empathy. We've got all sorts of different things, you know, curiosity, which is um, the inquisitiveness We've got the creativity, which comes into one of the other discoveries. They're all there. And actually, we're going to be adding a couple more as well um, to do with sustainability and to do with diversity, which I think is a really important inclusion. So it's not going to be huge amounts of a change, just a bit of a language tweak. But the children will be absolutely delighted to hear that it's the same idea, just in a slightly different way. And I think also we've been talking for some time about that vehicle coming through mm -hmm. from the primary years into the secondary years as well and how we approach year seven in particular as well. So this is lovely now as we finally found that vehicle to be able to tie in. And I know Mrs Stewart's got, she's, she's asked about international opportunities. Now, every week we get a, a newsletter from the from Round Square mm -hmm. and every week it does it ceases to amaze me what is on there. And I've clicked on things. So, for example, let's say there's a, a meeting, let's say Birmingham, and it's for children 11 to 13. And then there's one in Germany and it's for years, it's for 13 to 15 year olds. There's quite a few out there, aren't there? And maybe, you know, we, we will start with the younger ones. We might start somewhere quite near home, I think. So mm. maybe somewhere in the UK. Yeah, yeah there's one definitely. coming up in with a school in Newcastle for 10 to 12 year olds, was it? 9 to 11 year olds? Yes. Um, a school um, similar to ours, but it's an all girls school, but similar structure. And they've been rolling out the um, ideals they've been and the discoveries with part of the pilot as well. That's in June, which would be really interesting. We can get a group to go with us to that. Yeah. That would be lovely. I, have you seen any opportunities for children under the age of 11? I'm not sure I have yet. Have you? That's one of them. There, there, yeah. there are a few. They're rolling it out. It's very well embedded, we found, didn't we, when we were mm. away in the senior end of the school, particularly the opportunities Mrs Stewart's asking about um, up for the 16 to 18 year old mm. age range. Um, but they are. there are more and more coming in now with the discoveries and the rollout of the heroes. There's more coming in for the younger years. Yeah. Because we want to send our little ones out building schools or football pitches. <laughs> not yet, anyway. When they're a bit Some older. Quite capable. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm not saying they're not capable, but I would be a bit worried as a parent if I was <laughs> sending my. No, it'd be very much UK to. based Time. in the primary years. Yeah. So it's all very exciting as well. So d don't go anywhere, Mrs. McCraw. I think Mrs. Mrs. Wall might have gone. But we're going to go back to Accelerated Reader because I've got some questions to ask you about oh. Accelerated Re Reader. OK. And I know that, Mrs. McCrell, we are sending out a letter today about a reading policy in the Infant and Junior School following yeah. some comments that have come through the parent rep meetings and about reading in general. So can you tell us a little bit about the reading policy and what parents will see this afternoon in the mailing? Absolutely, yeah. So the letter's going to come out this afternoon. It's really to pin down uh, our vision of what reading, I mean, reading is the fundamental part of learning in the primary years. Uh, it underpins the writing, it underpins everything else. So it's really important that we get it right. It's going to detail exactly what uh, staff are going to do. Uh, so it's going to detail how we're going to integrate it into the curriculum, the opportunities for reading that we are going to provide for the children. It's also going to detail the expectations on the children for reading outside of school as well. So it's going to give a bit more detail about what we need from parents and the children, um, about filling in their reading logs and giving them to teachers to check every single week. But it's going to give a much better idea of that collaboration between home and school. And hopefully that's going to really help the progress of the children.
Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, the other thing is with the reading logs and um, we are encouraging parents to make sure that they're filled in yes. and signed every week and we'll make sure the teachers are checking those too. We will be. And, and I know that some children, they struggle a little bit with reading. So Mrs. Eisold, what looks like, what looks good for children of different abilities? For me it's always enjoying reading. Mm. They've got to have that passion and once they get that reading, whatever they're reading, reading magazines, comic books, signposts, leaflets, reading, being read to as well is equally important, particularly in the primary years, as long as they're enjoying reading, getting some enjoyment out of it. And that's what I'm really hoping, particularly for those children, that the Mayan aspect, whereas I'm a big lover of a book, but this will really open up the lit lit literary wor world for those pupils to have that accessibility without having someone to have to take that time to sit with them mm. in busy households. So there's a lot more scope um, than just the traditional books. Absolutely. And for children that have got any particular learning difficulties, are there, any, is there any, are there any tools? So I know, for example, you know, we have reading tools and yes. pens and things. What, what happens with Accelerated Reader? What help is there for them? So like I said before, they can have the text read to them. The text can be highlighted. You can either choose to have it um, words, individual words highlighted or a whole sentence. They can read along with it or it can be read. They can have it read to them um, and they can record themselves back afterwards. They can practice their reading skills. Um, which would be very good for public speaking, but recording as they are reading the text back and the teachers can assess that as well. There's the option um, to, they can zoom in on it, so they can be enlarged for children who just want small bits. And again, those adding that element of choosing, recommending text at their comprehension ability. So it's, re it's, it's really clever. It's AI. really exciting as <laughs> it well, is. isn't it? You know, great, too much to tell you. Great believer yeah. in reading. Absolutely. I've always got at least two or three books by the side of my bed. I think my husband despairs with me because it's just they litter the place. In fact, I read a book last night. I finished it last night. <laughs> it was highly disappointing. Oh, highly that. disappointing. There was no end to this oh, plot at all. No. So anyway, it's gone in the bin. I just want to encourage that love of reading and just the written word. It's just, like yeah. you say, it um, underpins everything and it's so important. And Mrs Hayward says, as the Accelerated Reader system offers resources in French and Spanish, could, they, could it be used to extend and to include GCSE MFL students? Yeah, yeah of course, 100%. Yeah. All the materials are there. What a fantastic resource yeah. it so is. So all yeah. children across the whole school will have access to the Mayon um, resources. The actual STAR testing, we were keeping to Key Stage 2 and 3 for now as a way of tracking the reading. Obviously, GCSE and A-level years, they've got a lot of tracking going on already. Yeah. So, um, but they'll all have access to um, the Mayan, Mayan resources. So, Mrs. I, um, Mrs. McCrell, you mentioned a favourite book of yours that you're reading to your children at the moment this morning. Tell us all about I it. Did. I'm reading mm -hmm. Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Um, my daughter, she's in year six, um, she received it for Christmas and it's absolutely amazing. I can't believe I've not read these books before, um, but I'm, I'm a great lover of Greek mythology and it's all in there. It's fantastically written. I can highly recommend. Mrs. Isaac, what are you reading at the moment? I must admit, apart I do from the it. Hello magazine. <laughs> I don't read Hello, actually. I find it a little bit... <laughs> I don't know. And I love um, a good detective, murder mystery yeah. kind of book. And I am, like you said, I'm a, a voracious reader, but I have, I have succumbed to a Kindle because I just can't carry oh, really? though, that many books around the place. And I tend to read in the sauna oh. as well, because with Kindle you can take in there, I know. Oh. I can't take it everywhere with me. It's always my bag. Mm. Um, but I do love a good detective mystery. That's the one thing I haven't moved over to yet. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sold on it yet. Maybe you'll have to... When you're travelling, it's yeah. just that bit easier. No, absolutely. <laughs> so if you've got any questions about anything else in school at all, then we're here to answer your questions. Um, Mrs. McCrow, is there anything else that you want to, to tell our parents this afternoon? Anything of any particular issue? You know, we're coming into half term now. Anything that we need to impart knowledge wise? I think we've probably done it all, but. I think we probably have. We did remind the children this morning to unpack their bags and take all the bricks out of there because uh, I think they've been accumulating stuff over the half term. Um, but no, I, do you know what? It's been such a busy half term. I can't believe it's finished, though. It's gone by so quickly. But the children, I think, are in dire need of a break for a week. <laughs> yeah, and I can't believe this is it halfway through the academic year as well. Mm -hmm. 
So from a senior school perspective as well, we, we encourage your children to take their sports bags home and get that PE kit washed, otherwise that's not going to be a good look after the half term. And yeah, also that yeah. we have year 11 and 13 mock exams when we come back as well. So we really are heading into exam time now and it's, there's no let up no. now for the, for the youngsters. So, but they've got to equally make sure that they get some downtime and some fresh air mm. as, well as, their, um, as well as their exams. I've heard a lot going skiing. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. A lot of our children are off skiing. I know. I heard that this morning as well. <laughs> In fact, I, the Breakfast Club this morning, they were so everybody had something to say. Someone was leaving at ten to three. Someone was going skiing. Someone was going to Germany. They all they were all going somewhere. So it was fantastic, <laughs> and I hope everyone has a good break. So if we haven't got any more questions coming through or comments, that thank you to all our parents for a fantastic half term again. And as I say, halfway through the school year, can't believe it. And that, that only means one thing, lighter nights, yes. warmer weather, hopefully. And we're looking forward to those summer events in the, in, <laughs> in the, in the I'll call it the tent, but it's the marquee. OK, so always contact us. The doors are always open. Have a lovely holiday and we shall see you later in February. Goodbye.